Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic and fabulous all black wearing Ask an Engineer. We're here and we're very fashionable and we're a little bit late. No, actually we're on time, yeah. perfectly on time, Yeah. Which is, all, which is like the new fashionably late. We've got an exciting show. We're broadcasting live from our downtown Manhattan factory, as you can see here. That's right. It's a lovely factory full of bubble wrap. Lots of bubble wrap. Lots of bubble wrap. Um, I'm Lady Ada, the engineer. Phil and camera control. That's right. And also this lovely lower third thing. Yeah. <laughs> which is now gone. Yep. So I sound silly. But tell me what's on tonight's show. On tonight's show, things from the show and tell. Every week we have people on and they show their projects. Some news in the world of Arduino. We'll have Packet the Mailbag, letters from customers, community, and more. Some news in the world of open source hardware. Adafruit Learning System, more tutorials. Time Travel Tuesday, Wearable Wednesday, all sorts of things in wearables. 3D Thursday, we'll have new products. Roboteria questions. Roboteria question. Roboteria question. We'll have top secret. Ooh. We'll show a cat. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. We have another photo of the cat. Yeah, we have so another photo. Watch of the entire show so you can see this new, yeah. previously unreleased cat photo. Nobody has seen it. It is also top secret. It's yeah. not out. Yeah. Cat. Lots of cool stuff. Lots yeah. of amazing products ahead and news. So much news. Yeah, we got. I mean, a lot of people on vacation, but still, we're here. Yeah. We have news. We're going to give it. Okay. Let's first pay the bills. The code is NAIL. NAIL. <laughs> <laughs> 10% off everything in the Adafruit store. The code is NAIL. It's Including the CC3000, which was out of stock last week. Yeah. Yeah, the CC3000 was out of stock. But now it's in stock, so now you can use this code and get this. The reason the code is NAIL is because we have a new product. It's an RFID NAIL. We'll talk about that soon. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. It's in here somewhere. This old NFC house. Yeah. Um, NAIL. Yeah. Well, you know, drywall or something. Yeah, if you want to track Bob Vila, you just like plug in one of these. Anyways, so let's uh, let's uh, get going. The show and tell was fantastic. Lots of cool folks. Lady Ada, what was on the show and tell? The show and tell was so awesome. We had lasers and games and air pies. Um, we started with Terry. Terry came back with her laser light show, which uh, now has three games and sound effects. And she has like um, like a serial port translator, so she can actually like run a bash shell on a Raspberry Pi via her laser raster vector display. Sorry, vector display, and uh, which is kind of cool. Um, and I don't know how she did that, so <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to find out. Maybe look at her code. But um, yeah, all in like a at Mega 328 too, <clears throat> which is pretty impressive with uh, two DACs. So yeah. It's pretty cool. It's like it's like playing Vectrex games, but like on your wall. And then Lon came back, and he's working on that game show stuff. He's really into game show technology, and he's designing a game lockout button architecture. Because I guess like depending on who, if you press the button too early and you get locked out, you get locked out permanently. You have to make sure they don't get like buzzed in again. So, anyways, he has this nice flow chart he was showing off. Tom came back, and he had previously shown us like a kind of a cobbled together. Uh, Raspberry Pi weather board um, on like a breadboard and stuff with just wires and then he, he actually designed a nice PCB like a pie plate type thing and uh, has all these sensors and, he's, and it's available for sale on Tindy so that's cool so yep. go check that out and then finally Peter uh, showed up and he actually came up with a kind of interesting idea it's, it's not electronic which I kind of like uh, it was a uh, whiteboard kind of a drawing book yeah. that didn't smudge the pages and then had these um, like fiducials but for a camera so you could yeah. snap a photo and the, the photo software would automatically crop and resize so, and rotate a, a it. A whiteboard, um, a whiteboard uh, notebook. Yeah, a whiteboard notebook. <clears throat> He's like, oh, it's, he, he calls it his redneck iPad. Which I actually kind of like it because I, I don't like writing or drawing on an iPad and a whiteboard can make it really easy to get ideas out there. And then, of course, you can clean it very easily. Yeah. So, I like that. So, you know, four people. Yeah. Four also, excellent projects. The, the the interaction with like physical objects and phones are so smart now. You can do augmented reality stuff. I think yeah. we're gonna see we're gonna see more of that. Totally. So cool stuff. Okay, everyone who's on the show and tell um, gets as seen on the show and tell sticker. That's right. And uh, what's neat is to see the projects that continue to evolve. Terry's project, um, you know. 
kind of as a demo, and That's now it's evolving it's, it's into scary. a board. She might be doing some RGB uh, lasers. Yeah, she, show, she told me how you do RGB laser collimation, so go and watch that. You can find out how you collimate three red, green, and blue lasers to make full color uh, laser drawings. Okay, Lady Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? Getting on the show and tell is really easy. Uh, go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit and look for the post where I say comment here and get added to our circle. And once you're in our circle, you'll get invited. We have a like of people. So be yeah. part of a really cool group of people, yeah. guys. And then uh, you and 499 other people will get invited <laughs> every Saturday night at 9.30 p.m. And uh, you can show off your project. Show us up as many times as you want. Okay. Uh, just have something cool. Yeah, it's like a weekly... Or not cool. It doesn't have to be cool. Like Actually, a... I want somebody to show up with a real failure. I would be like, this thing caught on fire. Like, yeah. That would be cool. No, th there's been people that said, here's something that didn't work with a project, and they've, they've done that. Um, yeah. Hackaday has a series of uh, project like failures. Um, it's You know, what's cool in the maker world, it's not like... Um, it's a it's a professional engineering firm, like five companies that have to show up, and they yeah. can only show successes. Um, part of being a maker is sharing like tips and things about um, what didn't work out. Yeah. So I think that's pretty neat. Okay, um, some big news in the world of Adafruit. I think it's big news. We will be celebrating four years of Ask an Engineer. That's right. Next week. You could have graduated college <laughs> instead of what you know. Yeah. So Pass and we have a, a special guest next week. Was. That's right. Is going to be here. Was let's. Well, I was going to be here on the show, so mark your, your GCALs, mark your iCALs, mark your whiteboards, and then scan it into your phone, whatever it takes, whatever it mark takes. the calendar. But Write four, it on a sticky note and stick it to your forehead. Four, four years of Ask an Engineer. That means basically for the last four years, we've always been doing this live show on Saturday nights. I think we've only missed like three episodes or four episodes in yeah, four years. Yeah, I think it's like two or three. It's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe like two a year. It's the l longest running live electronic show. I've on totally, the I've totally done Ask Engineer while like sick with the flu. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah, we we pumped you up with uh, uppers and then later downers. You're like the Elvis of engineering. And by shows. uppers, we mean just like coffee or iced tea or something. Yeah. Okay. So I that, I'm not, that, I that's coming I up. I can't afford the good stuff. <laughs> so that's uh, that's coming up. Um, next up. Uh, this we posted this up on the show. I thought this was interesting and it was worth mentioning. So um, this is on Makezine. Uh, MIT is now going to uh, make it uh, easier and and have a process so you can submit your maker portfolio as part of uh, the application process. Now this is something we thought that would happen a long yeah. time ago because kids are doing instructables. They're doing. Um, there's. Uh, we're uh, having people do stuff on the Adafruit learning system. We have 300 guides now. It's not all written by you. Yet we have uh, yeah. other folks. Um, they're doing their own tutorials out there. So as part of an application process, they're interested in seeing what projects are out there. So that is fantastic. Yeah. I think. Um, what do you do? You think this is a, a good step for an admission process? I'm so opinionated. Really? Yeah. Okay. I want to hear this. You want to hear my super opinionated opinion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're here, so we're doing the show. When I was at MIT, there was um, a little bit of this, like, um, oh, like, kids now, they don't make stuff anymore, and, like, it's, like, only, like, the old school MIT people, like, would actually hack on stuff, and there's always kind of this little doom, doom and gloom of, like, kids these days, yeah. and it's, like, there's actually more kids doing robotics, making stuff, building stuff. And um, the old dean of admissions, Marilee Jones, w did not like the kind of weird, freaky hacker makers yeah. that lived at like EC and Senior House. Yeah. Um, so the folks, and she with, said so. the folks with piercings and, and purple hair and just like didn't like that did didn't not, like the, didn't like the hackers. She did not no. Didn't and like she the hackers. Said like we don't we don't accept freaks like you anymore. Right? Okay. So okay, but that's not to. okay. That's the past. But it's over. That's the past. I'm so saying the, this the is the, the new normal. Is um, the weirder, the better, the more creative, yeah. the the more they're doing, yeah. and they are doing more, and like we so we won. Yeah. And she was kicked out of MIT, so okay. it all worked out. So this is, I think this is interesting, because if you look at um, you know, how MIT is viewed, usually it's like, well, this is, the, this is what technology schools want to be, or they, they want to yeah. kind of have similar things. Um, hack days are now common, hacker spaces, um, hacker spaces I inside of schools, um, yeah. all the equipment, like Arduinos, 
3D printers, laser cutters is becoming the, the norm. Uh, this is exciting because the maker movement has been, it's like you know, almost 10 years now, and I feel like this is a big milestone. Um, if, you t if you take away um, the hacking and making, there's no point to attending MIT because you can get everything on open courseware. Yeah. So there's no reason to. So you should only go for the culture because there's nothing yeah. out. There's the, it's only the people you're going to meet and the instructors and the students and the places you live. That's the only yeah. thing that matters now because everything is available online for free. Yeah. Right? So what's left? You should, you should go to a place where there's people who are like you, who like to build stuff and, and share their ideas and projects. Yeah. Uh, Charles, who we had on the show not too long ago, he is like a prolific documentation person. Yeah. Every time he does a project. And I, and I remember um, sending a note to uh, Joe Ito about him saying, wow, like this is, this kid is like kind of, you know, this is the way it should be. Like everybody publishing constantly. There should be, a, a, instead of like Hasties, they should say you have to document a project completely, you know, like a 20 page, instead of having a 20 page paper, Document a project completely in, tw in 20 pages, like, a, yeah. you know, a really good project, not just like, oh, I built like an op amp or whatever, like the, the requirements they have yeah. that are not, you're, you're like, you end up having to document like a, a kind of a boring, like, homework project. You should, instead should be documenting like a really intense, like, thing that you want to build, like a robot or like a, you know, a walking yeah. bicycle or whatever. I think That's more interesting and you'll actually get the communications requirements done. So that, I would rather have a documentation requirement than an essay yeah. requirement. I think for um, high school kids, if you're thinking you go into computer science, I think the new normal in the future is going to be um, when you apply to a school, they're going to say, what's your GitHub repo? Yeah, I mean, what's like, your instructor's account? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, Anyways. let's keep moving on. Good Pain stuff. Need. That's good. Some Arduino news. Every week we try to cover some cool things in the world of Arduino. Uh, I like the weeks where everything overlaps into different categories. It saves me a little bit of time with the okay. show. We have a new guide in the Adafruit Learning System. Yay! What is this guide, Lady Ada? This is a guide um, to try to help people who were trying to figure out what shields that Adafruit makes are compatible with what Arduino's. And we have this information in the shield guides too, but we also wanted to have it in one place um, since. It, it, we wanted to be able to refer people to like one URL when they kept asking, like, hey, what pins are used and what's compatible with what? So we went through every shield, or we're, we're still going through every shield that Adafruit makes and testing it. Some of these shields were designed before like the Douay or the Mega or the Leonardo, so like we didn't design them, like the Wave Shield was designed when there was only a Douay Milanova out there. There was nothing else. So it doesn't work with uh, some other um, Arduinos, but as we were designing new shields, uh, one of the cool things is we're making them uh, very backwards compatible. Yeah. So, um, you know, you can use um, like the latest Motor Shield, the ver Motor Shield version two. Version one was designed a long time ago. Version two, um, we designed to work with um, every Arduino uh, and going backwards, and every Arduino going forward. It should be forward compatible, as long as they don't move the I squared C pins, the, the five volt and ground pins. It should be forward compatible. Yeah. So we're trying to. Without having a lot of future knowledge about Arduino's, you know, future protect all the shields to make them all work. Yeah. Okay. Moving right along. Packet the mailbag. Here's Packet. Letters. We get lots of letters. Do we have a song yet for him? No. If anyone wants to make a Packet the mailbag song, um, you know, last time I asked for a little tune, uh, we got a uh, we composer. Have a new, we have a new product David Smith tune. made us a um, new product tune. So if you want a little Packet the mailbag um, tune, that'd be great. Um, letters, we get emails and posts and tweets and all sorts of things every single week on Adafruit. This is this week's letter. This is from Greg. It's been 25 years since I played with circuit boards and microcontrollers. Recently, I discovered your company, tutorials, and fun little devices like Arduino. Through your vision, I gain a brand new desire to learn and relearn more about microelectronics. My first project was to create a wireless microcontroller for my airport rotating beacon and runway lights. It worked great. It was so easy to get back into programming and hardware design, given your open source tools and philosophy. I just wanted to take a moment to say thanks. Well done. Yay! That sounds fun. Yeah. I like it when people take a hobby that they already have, yeah. and, and they're like, oh, well, I did like microcomputers or microelectronics in school like 20, 25 years ago. And then they come back to it, and they're like, oh, my God, I can write code in C. <laughs> yeah. You know, or like, wow, I don't have to like UV erase it for 25 minutes. This is great. Yeah. Like, it's actually enjoyable now. Yeah, you don't get old. Um because you, uh, I'm going to mess up this quote. Wow, you're really, you, you totally just I, already. This quote, it's hard to do. It's a, t it's a hard, uh, you, don't start, you don't stop making because you, you're old. 
You rolled because you stopped making. Mm. Yeah. That's okay. It. It's a jewel of wisdom. That's a jewel of wisdom. You from heard that. it here. Okay. First. Next up, the Adafruit Jobs Board. Every single week, we try to spotlight a job in the Adafruit Jobs Board. Adafruit Jobs Board free for everybody, and we screen every single one of these. They're only cool jobs in the maker world. No lame jobs for makers that want to post for skills, or no for companies. No hunters, no fakey yeah. fakes. Or for companies who want to find makers. And unlike LinkedIn, we don't charge anybody, so you yeah. have to charge to no post. No spam, no nothing. No charging yeah. to get a job. Just makers. Free jobs. So this is American Woodwork Corporation. They want an electrical engineer, and. Uh, this is in the Washington, D.C. area, and it reports to the corporate engineering manager. And they're looking for someone to design the electrical control system to support manufacturing operations in meeting and or exceeding established goals. So that's American Woodmark Corporation looking for makers. That's Next so up. cool. Next up, news in the world of open source hardware. Open source hardware summit, up, uh, summit coming up soon. Becky Stern oh, no. is going to be speaking. We're going to attend. Um, we're going to try to make it there. Uh, hopefully it'll work out. Uh, but the big news, uh, last week we tried to have Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories on our show and tell because it was their last day for their Kickstarter with Super Awesome Sylvia for the watercolor bot. Um, but the, it was a full show and tell, so I don't think they were, I think that's what stopped them from yeah, getting on. I don't know. But they sent this really cool picture of this is the watercolor Aww. bot and it made an Adafruit logo. That's so cute. So they, they hit their goals. This is an open source hardware project. It hit their goals on Kickstarter. I think they got like $90,000. Um, dollars and so this is super awesome Sylvia evil mad scientist laboratories this is the watercolor bot super cool um, evil mad scientist laboratories uh, check them out they're one of our favorite maker companies out yes. there and I'm sure it'll be available for sale if you missed the Kickstarter yeah okay next up Adafruit learning system almost 300 tutorials in the Adafruit oh, learning system oh I systems. gotta get writing yeah okay uh, we have uh, a couple and then there's um, a few others that I put in the rest of the show because it, it's in other sections mm -hmm. but um, here's a couple that maybe you could talk about um, we put in a uh, color OLED 1.5 inch color OLED tutorial we've already had OLED in the store for a while but now we have a lovely little tutorial on how to wire it and use it okay next up we also put in... This is uh, the Beagle wait. Bone. Yeah, I can, can I zoom in here for you. This is the Python oh, we one added This uh, is the Beagle wait. Bone. Yeah, I can, can I zoom in here for you. This is the Python oh, we one added, We've updated um, to the, the, the Adafruit Beagle Bone IO, a BBIO library, um, which I have to remind people, it is still alpha. Please do not use it for robotics that are carrying people around that could possibly get hurt if it <laughs> malfunctions. Guys, <laughs> it's still alpha, but we have updated the PWM to be opposite polarity, and we also added a polarity yeah. notice in there. Anyways, alpha, kids, but yeah. please experiment and uh, play with it. We hope to eventually get to beta once we uh, feel like it's... Well, I, I still wouldn't use it for carrying humans around, but it, you could probably carry a stuffed animal and be okay with that. Okay. Next up, Time Travel Tuesday. Missed On Tuesdays, the, we go... the tutorial, the XMPP? Um, it's coming up. Oh, sorry. So, uh, Time Travel Tuesday. Every single week we have things from the past. So, last year this time, you know what we were doing? We were upgrading our laser. We took our laser apart and we made a 60, uh, sorry, 35-watt 30, laser into a 65. Our laser tube actually had died after yeah, we used it five so years of laser. use. The 30-watt laser yeah. head just eventually just died. They're like, yeah... It, it actually does after five years yeah. of use. We use it a lot. Yeah, so we did this ourselves. We upgraded the laser. Um, Epilog, uh, we bought one from Epilog. They walked us through the process and we installed it. That was 2012. 2011, we launched the eye necklace. That is our open source necklace that pulsates like an Apple power button. It's cute. Yeah. 2010, we released our series called The Big Build. And this is Theo Comanche's circuit board art that um, he's uh, uh, best known for as kind of being the pioneer of this. Mm -hmm. So do check out the big build section on Adafruit. We released that in 2010. 2009, Lady Ada, you were on Rocket Boom. Remember Rocket Boom? Well, I remember this. Yeah, and uh, we had just uh, uh, purchased the pick and place machine that we just gave away now to NYC Resistor. So that was 2009. 2008, the Minty Boost was on Forbes. They actually had a little video on how to make a Minty Boost. This cool. is when they first started getting into the maker world. 2007, you're working on the Borduino and the Minty Boost. This is uh, around when you released them. Yeah. And what's cool is if you look at the, the past post in the blog, this is when you were writing up, uh, just, it was just you speaking, 
as you were writing up stuff. Now we have like 30 posts a day, and we have like Bloggers. authors and editors. Yeah. But now, but that was just you uh, by yourself so what, writing yeah, the, up stuff. Yeah, the Lady Ada blog. We did end up moving it. To, we copied all the data over to Adafruit. So yeah, yeah. every blog. I mean, it's not like categorized, but it's all there back to 2006. Yeah. And then um, in 2006, speaking of, you were getting ready for Burning Man. And here's one of the things you're working on. You're working on a bike stereo. Yeah. And you were working on the dual nature sculpture project. Yeah. And you were doing reflow in a toaster oven for yeah, all of your Burning I made, Man projects. I made the, um, the dual nature boards, which were, man, I wish the, the WS2812 LED pixels were around back then. I remember at Burning Man, I was with you, and we had to fix, go out there and fix them. Sucked. And it was, to, it was really complicated. A, I made a chaining LED, chaining LED boards by hand. It was so unpleasant. Yeah. So that was Time Travel Tuesday. Look back. Yeah. The history of Adafruit. Also, really expensive. It's interesting. It's like, now, like then I, I bought these um, 10 millimeter red LEDs, and they were like a dollar each. Yeah. And now you can get like 10 millimeter red LEDs for like 10 cents a piece. It's so cheap. You know, for the if I was yeah. buying like, like 250 or 1,000. So Time, it's interesting. Times change. There was no, you could only buy stuff from like DigiKey or Mauser. Yeah. There was like eBay, like maybe if you were lucky, but yeah. like, not really. Okay. Next up, Wearable Wednesday, every Wednesday, everything in the world of wearable electronics. So things, uh, it's flora like related. Four foot flora. Yeah, gigantic or we're flora. tiny, either one. Oh, so yeah. things in the world of flora, things that are going on in the world of wearables, mm -hmm. uh, events. Uh, there's an event that we're a media sponsor for now called Glazed. It is the Glazed Conference, and it's in San Francisco, and it's September 30th. Adafruit is a media sponsor. Check it out. Um, lots of Google Glass stuff, lots of wearable electronics going on there. Um, this was in Wearable Wednesday because it's so neat. Someone put all the skill badges that they've uh, earned. Uh, these are the Adafruit skill badges that you can check out. You um, can tell what they like to do. Yeah, here's a bunch of them that uh, uh, you can get an idea from uh, dumpster diving to oscilloscope to open source hardware to brewing to Eagle Cat to Instructables, all sorts of fun stuff. And then this was also uh, something that uh, was on Instructables, speaking of Instructables. This is a proximity tie that uh, someone built with a Flora, and it keeps people away. It's 3D oh, it's printed, 3D printed, too, 3D printed yeah. and, it, and it lights up when you get a little too close. Um, another announcement, every Wednesday now at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, we have Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. It's a live video show. How long is it? It's a half an hour. Wow. And if you like Wearable Electronics, you like Ask an Engineer, like all the stuff at Adafruit, we have... You want more. You want more? We do a Wearable Wednesday segment, Component of the Week, Material Spotlight, and Q&A. And the cool thing about this is that it's recorded as well, so if you want to watch it right after this show... You can go do that. Go for it. All on YouTube, and we do it on YouTube Live. We answer your questions, all sorts of cool stuff. It's a new show. Um, this is kind of our prototype of possibly moving Ask an Engineer to Wednesday nights. Okay. We've been talking about it. They were coming up on four years, so you know, if you're not changing and adapting and doing things, you're dying. Wednesday so, would be good, although I don't know how we do new products. Would it be like all the products we'll, in the previous week? We'll or? figure it out. We'll figure it out. Ooh. I think we can figure it out. Okay. Okay. Next up. Um, That's my segment, so I care. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, uh, we have a new project this week. Headphones that glow. Rocket. So, um, yeah, you'll, really yeah oh. you'll be you'll be we'll able to see them. Turn off the lights them. afterwards. Yeah, you'll be able to. You can see they're glowing. Um, it's always hard when we have the studio lights here. Um, if we only had a video that showed it. Oh wait, we do. Okay. Let's go to the video. Just like the music we listen to, our headphones can be an expression of our personal style. And we found the perfect pair to mod. White, translucent plastic with plenty of space inside to spare. And today I'm going to show you how to add some sweet animated lights to these Skull Candy headphones with Flora, Adafruit's wearable electronics platform. First, carefully take apart one of the earphones. Adafruit's mini screwdriver set comes in handy for this. And we store all of the loose parts safely together until we need them again later. We used seven Flora NeoPixels arranged and free-wired in a circle to fill the translucent plastic earphone with light. But you could easily use one of our new NeoPixel rings instead. Drill a hole in each earphone for a wire to connect between them. We also installed a power switch through one of these holes, since Flora's onboard switch will be hidden inside the earphone, along with the tiny LiPoly battery. You can grab the code and follow our complete tutorial on learn.adafruit.com to build your own LED headphones. Subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube and don't miss our weekly show on YouTube Live all about wearable electronics with me, Becky Stern. Okay, 3D Thursday. Every Thursday we have 
the best list source news feed in the world of 3D printing. Anything that's going on in 3D printing, it's in one spot, hands down. You'll see everybody in the world start to consider Thursday is 3D printing day. That's it. Okay. Matt Griffin runs the uh, posting on it. There, it's excellent. Th there's, there's a, there's, it's, it's 3D printing overload. Yeah. Okay, so I just uh, picked out a couple things from okay. this week. Um, someone printed out all the uh, Final Fantasy figures. T <laughs> I knew you'd like this. I love Tifa. Yeah, so look at these beautiful. These three, are intense. And, and they're using um, uh, color printing, yeah, too. Yeah, this, this is the they're Z Corp. Gorgeous. Wait, go back. I want to see all the, the characters again. Yeah. And they didn't just do all the main characters. They did all the characters, Yeah, no, which no. I like, including like the bad guys, too. Yeah. And the Moogles and the, the, Chocobos. And this the, is the future. What what makers do on weekends will become mainstream later. People, I think that's even Jack down there. Kids will uh, modify the figures and... Uh, yeah. And, and uh, print them. Intense. Okay, next up. Um, I wanted to show this. I don't know if we showed this before, but I, I, I thought it was worth revisiting if we didn't. This is Rick's um, Raspberry Pi case. So the contest, th right? That's 3D printed. Yeah. yeah it's Isn't so this cool? cute. Yeah. And it's got a little, like, yeah, the USB goes through and there's little extensions yeah. and stuff. It's okay. So speaking of so Raspberry cute. Pi, Friday is Pi Day, another giant resource for people who like Raspberry Pi. Check out the blog on Fridays, which is the Raspberry Pi, pie, raspberry pie, pie, pie category. Pie, pie, pie. Um, Let's pie. I picked out a couple projects. Um, this was just a fun one from the community. Um, someone used an old, you know, what are you going to use with those little cassette tapes? Turns out it's a perfect case for Raspberry Pi. So isn't that, isn't that neat? What does Mech sell sell now? I don't know. Well, they must sell something. They don't sell VHS tapes. They don't sell cassette yeah. tapes. CD, CD I don't on. think that'll be a trivia question, but maybe someone can look okay. it up. Well, and I'm then sure. um, next up, we have a really cool, uh, this is what you were asking about before. We have a really cool Raspberry Pi tutorial, the first one that I'm aware of, of Google Glass with Connected. Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so this is really interesting. And actually, um, Di Ching wrote this. And um, I'm actually not, I don't understand it 100% because mm -hmm. I don't understand, like, XMPP that much, but XMPP is some like messaging protocol, basically like a way to send messages between devices. It's actually not easy. Um, it sounds like it should be easy. It's like, oh, send email, but it's actually not easy unless it's like, you know, if, the, if you don't want them to be um, through an email address, you just want to send data back and forth. And so he actually implemented that for the, RAS, for the Google Glass um, using their API. He figured out how to do it with Google Glass, which nobody's done yet. So you can actually send data back and forth from Google Glass without having to go through like, Google's like special like API slash app store type thing. So you can basically control your um, Google Glass however you want. He, he signed up for the program and he got access to it. So um, this is kind of interesting. And so he's actually managing to, to like take a photo via the, the Raspberry Pi can ask the Google Glass to take a photo because like he authorized it too. So I think that's kind of neat because you can do like remote control stuff. Um, Sending data back and forth, you can like send a message from your glass to an application mm -hmm. that's running on another computer. And he has a little um, app spot app he wrote for uh, the Google App Engine, so you can just pass your messages through there. Yeah. So you have a, a, a have a server for it. Okay. Uh, next up, Tony Sherwood, our senior dev here at Adafruit, uh, launched his first um, learn tutorial. Yes. And this is kind of neat. So if you're into like cipher codes. And like uh, like one time password yeah. things. Um, maybe you can explain this. I took a p couple photos, but it's a really neat. It uses random uh, the random number generator yeah. in the Raspberry so Pi. So there's a hardware random number generator in the Raspberry Pi, and you can access it probably through like Dev U Random or something. And he basically made a one time pad um, generator that uses the thermal printer. And the cool thing about this is that um, you know if you have a, if you have one time pads and you you have one copy of it and the receiver has another copy of it it is the only if it's truly random one-time pad it's the and you only use one pad per message it's the only truly unbreakable encryption yeah you can use I mean like this is assuming that nobody's like watching you or like listening to your messages or like yeah. you know I don't whatever, really, I don't it, really think there's a giant organization looking at all of our email and 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 doing well, that. The, the That's bad, crazy the talk. Is, the bad news <laughs> is you have to do this by hand. You can't use a computer. Yeah. So um, for the one-time pad, you know, you use you use a piece of paper, 
and then you burn the one-time pad. That's the piece of paper he's... Yeah, uh, or you can 3D here. print it, right? <laughs> you can 3D print it. And yeah, I don't know exactly what... I guess that's a little... Yeah, you could, you, could, you could 3D print it and I think like hide it or something like that. What, I don't yeah. know the, exactly what this 3D prints up, but it's a nice photo. Yeah. Um, so he showed how to use the uh, Raspberry Pi. He's like, I want to try building one of these with the Raspberry Pi. So it's cool because it actually prints it out and then you tear it off and... Yeah. Or, you know, give one to your friend, and then you keep one, yeah. and then you can send secret messages that nobody can crack. Okay. Next up. And yep. you can do it by hand. You don't need any special math. You just like yeah. you add, you know, a plus a is b, a plus b equals c, a plus c equals d. You know, whatever. Yeah. You convert to numbers and then back. Um, we're about to do new products, so let me just. Uh do the code. Get the song. The code is nail first before we get into nail. the product. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store that's Including in stock. nails. Including nails, yeah. Why did you pick nail? Because it's funny. Okay. Um, it's new product time, Lady Ada. Here it is. And new product song, new product time, new product. Time. Okay. So okay. I have a, a couple updates before we. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's new product related. Uh, real quick, we did an update to the CC3000 library. Yes. That is our Internet of Things. Two things Four. I added. One is I added um, fast printing. So the way we were doing printing before is we would send one byte per packet, which is as bad as it sounds. So now it sends a full string as a packet, so it's like 10 to 20 times faster for sending uh, data, which should speed stuff up. I, I only released it with one byte part because I wanted it worked and I wanted to get it out there, but we've actually been trying to port a Twitter client to it. And to do that, we had to have it be a little bit faster. Um, yeah. For this board, we also added UDP and a UDP example connecting to uh, NTP network time protocol servers pool.ntp.org to get the current time. It's actually pretty easy. You just connect to NTP, send data, receive it. It's, it's actually very lightweight, and you yeah. can uh, get the current time. So you don't need a real time clock. You can just keep track of it uh, okay. using Wi Fi. Next up, um, again, uh, the Motor Shield is in stock, so I wanted to include this. So we updated the uh, Motor Shield uh, library. Yeah. There's a reference now. Yeah, there's a reference now, and this is our new version of the Motor Shield. This is Motor Shield 2.0. Lovely. Yeah, let me um, let me get over, over there here. and look at that. This is our new Motor Shield, and um, I thought it'd be really fun to just show the Motor Shield since we just uh, got a batch of these out of the pick and place machine. Just show them what, what it looks like. Up. Yeah, this is what it looks like um, as they come out. So they come on these. Okay. Oh, focus. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, one day we should maybe get a light with this. Yeah, I'm working on that. Selection. But um, yeah, you can see they come in a panel of two by three, and we break them off and test them, and that's how they uh, show up. They get pick and place six at a time. Yeah, so that's a nice sheet of motor shields. Yes. All right, <coughs> next up, uh, perhaps the star of the show tonight, it is this beautiful screen. Yay. Just look at the screen. Yes, this is a nice I'm screen. just going to go through this. We did take some nice photos. So we should take advantage of them. Yeah. And then you can look at the large size photos. What's interesting is these are actually photos of the TFTs. are not photoshopped. Almost everybody yeah, we else don't out there the photoshops what the screen looks like. This is actually yeah. what it looks like. Yeah, and I want to show um, zoomed in. So the reason these are gigantic photos. So when I zoom in, you'll be able to see. You can see the pixels. You'll be able to see the pixels. So yeah, the only thing is, is that because it's a real TFT, it's slightly more. Yeah, it depends on how people see it on their screen. Yeah, so let's uh, go to the overhead. Okay, so this is the screen, and I'm going to. Yeah, so like over a video, like look how beautiful that looks. You can actually, you can actually see it. Yeah, that's a nice photo of a butterfly on some flowers. So it's a 2.2 inch TFT. But it's a uh, 320 by uh, 240, so it's it's nice, you know, fairly high resolution for such a small screen. I mean, it's not like a Retina display, but it's still pretty good. And uh, on the back, we've got a micro SD socket, so you can uh, store images on it. You can also just, you know, display it, you know, squares, rectangles, triangles, whatever we have in our GFX library um, is supported, and it's attached to a um, a PCB, and then you can use a SPI four wires plus a reset pin, basically to uh, control it. So there you go. So what's the interface to control it? It's four wire SPI. Four wire SPI. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's a little better. Yeah, look how great that looks. I mean, it's it's stunning. This is um, I think one of my I mean, favorite new so products. Like really close and see the pixels. 
Yeah, you might have to zoom in a little bit so it focuses. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It has a it's pretty good angle too. I mean, it's not IPS, but it's yeah. it's pretty good. Um, someone wants to know: Is there any um, easy to use graphic driver chips that would allow animations on that screen? You can you can do animations. It's just SPI. I mean, it, it, you have to use hardware SPI. You can yeah. do animations. It's just you have to have a processor that can handle it. But it's not. It's not for, for this. It's designed for basically like basic graphics with an Arduino. If you want to do video, get a Raspberry Pi and a TV. Okay. Kind of the best thing to do. All right. Next up. Look at this little heating pad. It's so cute. Look at this thing. It's this little little thing that heats up things. Yeah. In fact, I've even plugged it in. Yeah. And it's heating up right now. It's um. It's actually made by like the same company that makes our like LED. Um, ribbon that we yeah. use and it's um it's a stainless steel fiber oh there you go it's a stainless steel fiber that's woven into like a, a gauze which is you know whatever like not probably not cotton it's like a polyester gauze and uh let's see if i can move that over here um so you can see there's a sort of a, a weave you can see my hand through it, but there's still like this weave of metal, and um, you just basically power it, and it's just it's just a metal that's you know uh, heats up effectively, but doesn't get so hot. You know, doesn't uh, the resistance doesn't change. It's very stable. So when you give it five volts, it draws about like half an amp to an amp, and it heats up um, depending it, on the voltage. Is it contained in something that's water resistant? Um, this is. You know, it's it's kind of uh, it's in Kapton tape, which is thermal. It's not waterproof. I wouldn't dunk this under water, but it's fine for like basic use. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't put it in a wet environment at all. But um, you know, if you want to do that, there are you know you get like a, a plastic, completely en yeah. encased, like UL listed heater. This okay. is just for basic heating applications. Um, so, got my. And you can wrap it around stuff, which is nice. So I can wrap it around here and see it getting heated up. So it's a little warm. So you could use this in a temperature sensor to turn it on and off to control it. You could yeah. um, uh, high altitude ballooning. Folks use this to keep components from freezing. Yes, yeah, this gets up to like with five volts. It gets, seems to get up to like 40 C or so. Yeah. Um, you can calculate that out in Fahrenheit if you want. Um, but uh, put a I bunch of those in a jacket and a minty boost and, and warm myself yeah, up. Yeah, you don't even need a minty boost. I would just use um, like three or four AA batteries. Wow. And just connect it direct. I mean, there's no reason to have a boost converter because it doesn't really matter what the voltage is. You can actually run up to, up to 12 volts. Yeah. If you have a 12 volts, it actually gets a little painfully hot. Okay. So it's it's it can run up to 12 volts, but I wouldn't put it against skin at 12 volts because I was I was playing with that and I was like, ow, this is like really yeah. toasty. Every winter I go to this um, big event called Freezing Man. Yeah. It's in the middle of Antarctica. And no, they uh, have a Freezing Man. Do they really? Oh, I was yeah. just making that up. Yeah, no, there's, there's one. <laughs> Okay. It's really cool. I haven't attended one. Yeah. Does it, does a snowman melt at the end, or does it? How, no, if it's, it's the opposite, it's it gets a, bigger, right? It's on a. I'm trying to remember if it's on a. Not an. It's like an ice ice lake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving along here. All right. So next up, um, we have some RFID stuff. Um, yeah. I'll keep it on the overhead. Um, we have these little leather RFID things. Yeah. Look at this. I can show this off. These, these, little, these are very cute. It's just, it's just a, um, a RFID tag, but encased in a little leather key fob. I just thought it was kind of nice. You could, la you could laser it. You can laser engrave these. We, yeah. got, we had them not engraved, so you can engrave them as you want. Um, yeah, what type of uh, RFID tags are in here? These are all MyFair Classic 1Ks. So these work very well with our RFID staff, our yeah. um, NFC Shield. You can write to them. They have a unique ID, a four-byte ID. This is a nail oh, version. Yeah, we're gonna get to the nail now. Well, I mean, it's okay. the same. It's uh, basically the same idea that says the. Um, okay, but these are these are super weird and cool because they're nails. Okay. <laughs> you just love those nails. Yeah, though. this is a neat idea. So you could go and put these all over the place and through drywall, and. Um, or the ground. I was thinking. Or the ground. Geocaching. Or yeah, something. geocaching. You can do all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, I'll probably with put this. them in a plant or something. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what they're for, but yeah, they're basically this um, nail. I mean, when you, you have RFID nails, everything in the world looks like an RFID hammer. No. Um, Mixing up my quotes tonight. 
all that. Yeah, this has the uh, the My Fair tag is the head, yeah. so that's why it has like a large, kind of like hammery surface here. It's actually the tag itself, which you can kind of see, and that um, is the head of the nail, and that that's the same exact thing that's inside here too. So you know they just pop it out and they put it in this leather, leather key fob. Yeah. If, if you were like a super spy, you could put these on the road and then the car would get tagged and then you would get the diamonds back before the code is needed or I don't know. Um, all right. You're reading too many one-time pad Yeah. <laughs> all right, next up. Um, we've got uh, these uh, big LCD panels. LEDs. Sorry, LED panels. At what point does an LCD turn into an LED or just when it gets a certain size? <laughs> uh, totally different technologies. Because yeah. <laughs> if you got a bunch of them together. Well, LCDs usually have LED backlights. Yeah. But it's a different thing. The LCDs turn on yeah. off to let light through. Yeah, these are beautiful photos. Yeah, these are great photos. Okay, so let's try to put this on the overhead. I don't know what's going to happen here. Okay. Well, yeah. I have two pieces of paper. Oh, yeah, there's another piece of paper right here, right underneath. Can you grab it? Yeah, here you go. Okay. Okay, you're going to diffuse that. So here is the, you can see it flickering because it's uh, the refresh rate's colliding with the refresh rate of the camera. It's not actually flickering. Well, I mean, it is, but humans can't see it. Yeah. But um, it's a, a 32 by 32 pixels, and it's full RGB, and it's fairly large. Um, it's larger than the other 32 by 32 we had, although it's the same wiring and everything. Um, but it's less expensive because it's less dense. Um, those ones are extremely common, um, so it's only like $75 for 1,024 RGB LEDs, which is a pretty good deal. And um, you can kind of, like this is running actually on an Arduino, and you can kind of draw basic graphics and stuff with an Arduino on this. Um, technically, they can be chained. Um, on the back, there is... We call um, this one the Rave Death Star. Yeah, this is, there's an input and an output on each one and technically they can be chained although uh, an Arduino does not have enough memory for it. Maybe a Dewey would but we haven't ported the code uh, so you can see the arrow. Um, so they can be chained. They can be um, used with our um, LED driver core that we have in the store. It's a little expensive but it has the FPGA stuff on it to drive like you know a couple dozen of these each way. It can do um, 1000 by 700 pixels so that's like Divide by 32. It's a lot. It's like a couple hundred panels, I think, of these, of these guys, and it's uh, a lot of pixels. And on the back, there's little drivers. You have to PWM them by hand, so yeah, you do need a fairly good processor to do so. But uh, you know, again, we have Arduino code ready. And some people have written code for the uh, propeller. We have some FPGA example code, I think, also somebody wrote yeah. um, for the uh, DEO Nano. So it's, you know, if you want to play with these, it's, it's, you can do it with a microcontroller, just you can't control more than like one panel at a time. If you have an FPGA, you could do multiple panels. Yeah. If you're that's, how, that, that's how uh, like the store displays work and all these big walls, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, each one of these little guys is an RGB LED. That's cool. Lots of LEDs. So yeah, this is, so it's like people were asking, like, why don't you have like an 8x8 LED matrix thing? And I'm like, man, for like the same price, I can just like, you can yeah. get this gigantic display. It's huge. And this is also used in, a, we have like a Bluetooth yo-yo thing that uses a display this size. So yeah. these are kind of cool. And the fact that they're using all these gigantic uh, LED walls means it's not too expensive to um, yeah. have these in the store Okay. for individual. That was New Products, Lady Ava. That was New Products. That's what New Products look like. Carrie, hold this up. Yeah, we're going to do that right now. Oh, look at that. I can kind of see it. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I can. I can. No, yeah, it, no, doesn't help. Not it doesn't help. <laughs> it's just, it's too bright. It's yeah. too bright. It looks good under the, uh, the overhead, though. Anyways. Okay. Uh, we're going to do, it's not All out yet. All the colors. We're going to do uh, top secret products right now. Yeah, sure. It's not out yet. Don't ask. And then we're going to get to some engineering questions. Mm -hmm. Lady Ada, what new products are you working on that will be released soon that we can't ask questions about? Well, yet, folks? Um, the first thing I've got is um, I have an 8x8. Eight eight Whoa, it's like totally shoved in here. Do you want to turn that off and I'll take it out of the bag? Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't know why they put it in a bag that's exactly the same size. <laughs> yeah. That's my lock. You can just cut that also. Yeah. It's like just, a prize. Uh, just rip in half. It's okay. a prize. Um, yeah, so we got an 8x8 version of the NeoPixel Matrix. We have a shield version, a ring version, 
And now we have uh, an 8x8 version. So this is the first one uh, we made. We have a tester and everything ready to go. So yeah. hopefully we'll be picking and placing these next week. Yeah. We have like a huge box of reels of, of Lots you know, of people facilities. wanted these. They want to make cubes. They want to do all sorts yeah, of Yeah, we thought it would be kind of fun. You could actually like put a little like Arduino micro inside and it would be <coughs> an LED, a yeah. little mini LED cube. Yeah. I don't you know. You put an accelerometer in there and do all I don't all know what you do, yeah. but yeah, you could Okay, you so could that's do coming it. soon. What coming else, Lady Ada? We also <laughs> have um, the CC3000 Shield. Okay, so this is our Internet of Things well, Shield. Yeah. And um, it's the uh, CC3000, it's Wi Fi. Our term for our Internet of Things product, products is probably going to be IOTA. Uh, Internet of Things by Adafruit. It's, it's up for it's up for debate. It's up for debate we're internally still, right now. Yeah, we're still. I like it, but it's yeah. So the C three CC three like Nano and Pico. And yeah, the CC three thousand. Um, we sold out every time we put them in. We sold it instantly. We just put some in so uh, get them. They now. changed the look of it. It it like this one. It doesn't have the TI logo, but it has the SEC ID on it. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, so this is the new shield, and um, this will go on top of a uh, Arduino. Yes. And it'll make your Arduino so Wi-Fi. You Wi-Fi, uh, SD card, reset button, uh, power supply, logic level shifter. And you need a little, uh, a little you know, SD antenna. card, too. And you yeah, give them an SD card. Antenna. Right. And then uh, we'll probably make a version that has a UFL connector and some yeah. antenna. I wanted to get the version with the antenna out first. And we're still um, getting feedback from people on the CC3000, like adding UDP and stuff. So it's still a work in progress. Yeah. Not ready for everybody yet, but uh, yeah, we're getting there. We had um, a, uh, the, I guess the right term is a muckety muck, like an important person from TI here. Lots yes. of things in store. Mr. TI, no, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Ken. Yeah, we had some folks here um, uh, from TI. Yeah. Really great folks. And uh, we're working on a lot of cool things. Um, yeah, we have their attention now. Yeah, it's, we have a lot of cool stuff coming. So those are the two new products that are. Yeah, they're gonna. gonna we're gonna see okay. if they can get us stuff early, such as the CC three thousand one. Yeah. And some LVDS yeah. HDMI driver things. For the Internet of Things stuff, uh, one of the folks in the chat room um, mentioned this because I thought it was clever last week too. Adafruit dot eleven. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's that that's was a good one. that was top secret products. Coming out shortly. I, I don't want to get in trouble with the like IETF though. Okay. I triple E. We're gonna do um we're gonna do questions now. Okay, you do. You yeah, do I'm gonna I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. Uh, Give it. Yeah, I'm gonna start uh, okay. doing these. Okay, Lady Ada. First question is. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit, but feel free to ask him. I purchased the LiPo 2600 milliamp hour. Is it okay to use a tiny USB charger rather than the larger, fancier one? You can use any uh, LiPo charger that we have in the store with the big batteries. It's fine. Um, the only thing to watch out for is if you're charging a teeny battery, that's when you wanna make sure that you're not overcharging. You can never really yeah. undercharge these batteries. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. It just takes a longer, but our little micro charger, it's like, especially if you solder to the bottom, so it's 500 milliamps. So, you know, it'll, it'll charge it up in like five, six hours. It's still good, and it's actually a little bit better for the battery. You want to charge them. It's better to charge your battery slow. Yeah. For the, for the battery chemistry, it'll, it'll make it last a little bit longer. Can you control the heating of the heating pad with a pot? You cannot control the heating pad of a pot with the pot directly because the heating pad is a resistor, and you'll end up just, I mean, you would have to have a gigantic potentiometer. Instead, you would use a, um, a transistor just like you would PWM a gigantic LED. Um, you wouldn't want to dim an LED with a potentiometer that was like a f 5 watt LED. It's like you need a gigantic potentiometer. They don't really, I mean, they probably do make them, but it's like mm. five, six bucks, not worth it. You're better off using a transistor to do the switching yeah. and PWM it. And you can use a 555 if you don't want a microcontroller, or you can use a microcontroller either way. Okay. Um, next up, are we you, using. You could use a potentiometer uh, to to adjust the current going into the base of the transistor if you know how to bias uh, a common emitter um, amplifier, like a current source or a current sink, you could do that. Uh, that's kind of a little bit more advanced, so unless you're like, well, wow, I'm totally excited about um, making a model current sink NPN transistor, just go with the 555 or microcontroller. Okay, next up. Um, the question was, are we using our USB microscope for the overhead camera? No, we're actually using Two of the identical cameras. We got um, them free. Yeah. Um, the we thing, saw them. The no, thing is, the, the microscope would be good for close-ups, but then we can't.
Yes. Yeah, and even though Wirecast, the software that runs all this, allows multiple cameras, the camera that's um, the other source that this looks at is the camera built into the Mac, and then the USB soundboard. So we're actually maxed out. It's totally maxed. We yeah. Can't, we, we really wanted to have the microscope, but we just. Yeah. If we, we do a show do that's just overhead for close ups, then we switch, yeah. but we can't do that. Okay. It's one Next of those up. things, it's like if we had like a gigantic, crazy studio. Like that would be yeah. like something we get, like a video mixer and shit. Okay, next up, internships at Adafruit. We don't do unpaid internships at all. We've always been against that, and now it turns out the rest of the world is agreeing that unpaid internships is not good. But um, we do pay people to work here. So if you're fantastic and you're doing cool stuff, you're publishing online, and uh, you would like a job here, that's the way we do it. Yeah. So um, our uh, uh, one of our folks that is a EE is just going back to school. Their summer. Uh, uh, break. Uh, he spent here, and he was in the fabrication department. And he actually was a mechanical engineer, and then decided to switch to be an EE after being around all the stuff. That maybe oh. wasn't all the reason, but some of the reason. Okay, next up. Um, I like converting people from Mechie to EE. Want to see people on our side? Want to see if is for capacitor coming out? Uh, working on it. Next up, is there a case for the Raspberry? Is a case for the Raspberry Pi necessary, or is it just for looks? Just for looks. <laughs> no, that's not true. No, a ca it's fine. A case for the Raspberry Pi. So if your kids are carrying these around in backpacks and going to school with them it's and protective. everything. It's protective. Yeah, so. It's not necessarily for functionality. It does work without one. Yeah. But it's um, for protection and, and Yeah, if a, and pi, if a Pi drops protection. off the, the table, um, that's not a Sad. great thing. Um, people um, put these in their living rooms and they want more than just a circuit board hanging out. Yeah, so. you don't want it to be like touching anything that could be conducted, something spills okay. on it, the SD card could come out okay. more easily. Next up, um, if you could recommend three things for an EE student toolbox to help them survive college, what would they be, Lady Ada? Um, a pair of calipers, like the Nitsitoyus, are really good. A good multimeter. Uh, the X Tech 330 we have in the store, or the pocket multimeter. Actually, I'm a little. I'm sort of biased with the pocket multimeter now because they'll uh, they'll keep that, and then a, a really good um, wire stripper, like the Hacko professional wire stripper we have. A little more more expensive than like the cheapy wire strippers, but if you're going to be using it in lab for three hours a day, like every other day, you really want to have a good one. Okay, next up. I've seen the LiPo batteries and shields, etc. What's the difference in lithium-ion batteries and how to use with Arduino? I don't, the difference between what? I've seen the LiPo batteries and shields, etc. What's the difference in lithium ion batteries and how to use them with Arduino? Okay, let's skip this one for now. Sorry, I don't, there's a different How would you prototype a board with a lot of SMD components? I don't want to, can't do some of the SMD soldering. Um, if you're doing SMD soldering, you can use um, SMD breakout boards. We have some in the store. Um, some big SMD parts like 1206s, you can actually kind of place on top of perf board and solder them in place. Um, but for like SOICs, TSOPs, TQFPs, you'd use like a surface mount to through hole converter um, and then just practice in WIC. Okay. Next up, um, your 1 watt LEDs that are mounted on a heat sink. Is that flashlight bright? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it hurts to look at them. Okay. I've used your Ethernet tutorial to get files off of SD card. Any quick thoughts on sending files to Ethernet Shield and SD card? There's probably a tutorial out there somewhere. I've, I haven't written it, but I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's one out there somewhere. Okay. Or you can um, just take the SD card examples and the Ethernet examples and just work it out yourself. Okay. Probably isn't too hard. How many of the Adafruit libraries are going to be ported to the Douay's SAM? 3x8e. Um, well, we we have a tutorial that we just posted up that has a list of what shields we have that work with the Due. Um, porting stuff to the Due is not a uh, really high priority for us. Our priority is to uh, support everything on the Arduino Uno because it's the most popular Arduino by far. The most people have it. Yeah. It's the easiest to use, and if it works with the Uno, it should be portable to the Due. Um, Thing is, Arduino is coming out with like two or three new Arduinos per year now, and we have 150 GitHub repos. Yeah. So if you do the math, it's it's just a, it's a kind of a bit of a game. We try to make it as possible, as easy as possible for them to be portable or back compatible. But there's some things that just aren't going to work on the Dewey. If it is it does work with the Dewey, we say so very clearly. 
Otherwise, it's kind of uh, try it out, see if it works. Okay, right? next up. Um, any plans to create optical isolators? No, I think you can pretty much get an optocoupler or something from Digicure Mauser. It's like a 6N138, it's probably fine. Okay, um, this was the clarification of that question. What's the difference between LiPo and Li Ion? Uh, lithium polymers are, are softer um, than lithium ions. They come in a, a silver pack. Um, lithium ions are usually hard pack. Uh, for the detailed chemical differences, check out Wikipedia. Um, there are slight differences in what I think the materials used in the anode and cathode. It's basically what uh, packaging is used. Okay. Is there a good service to pick and place components similarly cheaply for prototyping PCBs? Yes. Tweezers <laughs> and a hot plate. Okay. <laughs> Very cost effective. You okay. Can get tweezers for like five bucks. <laughs> okay. How can I get more sensitivity of the IR sensor? like the Wii remote or something? Um, if you can, if, if it's a digital sensor, whatever sensitivity you can get is what you can get. I don't think it's incredibly sensitive. Um, you might have to spring for a specialized sensor if you need something more precise. Okay. Next up, um, are we working on a NeoPixel LED strip tutorial? Uh, we're working on a general purpose NeoPixel tutorial that would cover all of the different shapes and strips that we have since we now have like 10 different products that use uh, NeoPixels in them. Okay, next up. Is it possible to hook up many greater than 20 sensors to a Raspberry Pi via GPIO? Um, you can, you can uh, connect um, you know, eight analog sensors to um, analog digital converter, and those take like three pins, so you can multiply that out. You could probably, you know, if you share SPI pins, probably connect like 64 plus analog sensors uh, using analog digital converters. You can connect as many I2C sensors as you want as long as they all have separate addresses, which is difficult. You can also use GPIO uh, expanders for other stuff. You can, you can connect a lot, you just have to be smart about it. Okay, next up. The adjustable Pi camera shows five mini screws, one spare, um, but only one, uh, but only four holes. The two pieces, they're two pieces of plastic. Should they be glued to stay on top to stop any wobbliness. Um, the it's a folks, Pi Maroni thing. Yeah, yeah. folks at Pi Maroni uh, make that. You, they're uh, super receptive. You can ask them um, why they decided to do that, and you can just go to pimaroni.com. I yeah, think they have forums. Yeah, well. I don't. Um, I remember mine just kind of came together. And I don't think. I don't remember how I did it, but it, I think maybe I'll use two screws even. Okay. Next, uh, um, is there any uh, service better, cheaper than OSH Park for prototyping PCBs? It's a good one if for, yeah. for U.S. made PCBs. I think it's it's yeah. kind of the uh, it's it seems to be premier at this time. Yeah, I mean I I don't use them honestly because I need much higher uh, speed, so I'll actually go with um, a more expen a much more a much more expensive but much faster service. Yeah, I end up spending about four hundred dollars for prototypes because I need them in like a couple days, not a couple weeks. Okay, two last questions. Two I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to answer these. Um, Arduino Robot and Arduino Yun. Um, we have to wait until the Arduino team um, and distributor, the, the, their team, allows us to sell them. Um, yeah. We don't have them. Email and contact Arduino and say, you love shopping in Adafruit and you like getting all your Arduino stuff from us. Um, I just don't think they have until them. Until they get clearance for us to buy them, we're not permitted to buy yeah. we, them. We, our account is not permitted to buy them and, and we can't do anything yeah. about that. I think they've only um, had a few for Make It Maker Fair for the bot and the Yoon's not out yet. But yeah. um, it, you know, if, if you want to see those type of things stocked at Adafruit, um, it's always helpful if you guys um, email them, contact yeah, them when you them. see them. I, well, I can't do anything. I ask them, hey, yeah. can we buy you? And they're like, no. And I'm like, I can't do anything about it, really. Okay. Not and my then, choice. And uh, then one last question. This is just going to be for you. For um, me. Yeah. Good. Uh, any recommendations on how to, how to start making your own PCBs? Um, I would actually start with something like a Perma Proto instead of, and, and, and if you, unless you really need to make a custom PCB. If you absolutely need to make a custom PCB, um, you can start etching with ferric chloride, but it's just like you need a lot. Of, you you kind of need to get a bunch of equipment. You need to get a tank, and like a heater is kind of a good idea. And like you need press and peel. And I mean, you can do it, um, but using something like a Perma Proto will get you pretty far. Um, and it might be a little chunkier than you want, but um, it'll. 
You might have less problems. A lot of people have a difficult. I mean, it's a skill that you have to to gain to get really good quality. Um, but if you do want to, there's a lot of kits out there you can rent, buy, and they're like ready to go. You know, DIY. You know, add okay. just add water, and uh, you can make your own ferric chloride etching all kit. All right, that was the questions. Good work, Lady Ada. Yay. Okay, next up, trivia question. We're gonna get this going pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Lady, what are the rules? If you've won before, you're not allowed to win another project, uh, another um, present. So uh, sit on your hands or have a sandwich or something. Only uh, brand new non-winners are allowed to enter. And the first person to type in the correct answer will get the prize, which is a 2.2-inch uh, TFT. Yeah, you guys are lucky because I said box of RFID nails, and not she a said box no. Of RFID nails. And, and Lady Ada said no. I'm like, I'm, not I'm like, away a box of nails. A box of nails. No. RFID nails though. All right, fine. You get a 2.2 inch TFT, which is super handy. All right. Works with Arduino, and I think that uh, might eventually end up working with a Raspberry Pi. Some people working on that too. Okay, first person to type in the chat. What is the megahertz of the? Wi-Fi nails. I'm the still, resonant frequency. Yeah, what is it? Type it in the chat. Resonant frequency. And you get the thing. I'm still sticking to the trivia question having something to do with the nails. The answer is not nails. Yeah. Remember, you, you yeah. can't win if you've already it's won. pretty easy. Just go to the product page. Very suspicious that there's people who are double winning them. Yeah, you can go to the product page or the nail page and uh, just type in... Resonant frequency. The resonant frequency. And uh, type in the whole thing. Yeah. It's a number. It's the title of the product. I'm surprised folks haven't got it. This is cool. Yeah, I know. It's not nail. Nails. No one got it yet. They're typing this number, but that doesn't seem to be the right number. Mm, I don't think so. Can you go to the product? Is the product up? Yeah, it's right there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Nail. I know. Okay. George I O K, you got it. Congratulations, George. Email support at adafruit.com. It's 13.56 megahertz. That's the resonant frequency. There's a little coil inside, and when you blast it with 13.56 megahertz uh, waves, it uh, will actually react, and so that it, that's how it gets energy um, from the RFID reader antenna, yeah. and then that's how it responds as well. It's cool. Okay. Here's MOSFET, but then we got a new photo. So he crawls up on my shoulders now and just hangs out and looks around. This is really weird. Yeah, so there he is. Um, it's his he new little trick. He just kind of like, he jumps up. It, yeah, when I lean down, he'll jump up on top of my shoulders and just and hang out. And he just sits look there. He just likes to look around. And he looks around. Yeah, so and, that, that's uh, MOSFET. Sometimes he rubs up against your chin. Yeah, he'll like nah, he yeah. that. Okay. That, you have like nice wide shoulders. You have, there's plenty of cat surface area. Yeah. Probably some cat to here. Cat surface area. He does it to me too, but I don't. I'm not. I don't have such broad shoulders. It's not as comfortable. I'm like bonier. Okay, that was tonight's show. Don't forget, next week Amanda Wozniak is going to be on the show, celebrating four years of Ask an Engineer. Um, thank you, everyone, to his, who's in the show and tell. The show and tells are awesome. Thank you, everyone in the live. Keep it hot. The live studio audience uh, out there in Ustream and YouTube land. Um, this show is also recorded. It'll be going up shortly, and we also post it up on how Tuesdays. Is the, how is the YouTube and Ustream? Is it working out? Um, yeah, I think I've got it down. I you mean, got it down? I think I've got it down. And then we've added uh, the Wearable Wednesday. Uh, the wearable show with Becky, and uh, so far, no problems. Um, I sent a bunch of uh, bug reports to Wirecast, and they fixed stuff, so that was good. Oh, yeah. Oh, the thing with the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to keep doing it over and over again. Um, I don't have to authenticate Ustream three times to get it to work. Okay. That's nice. All just, right. Just like two times. Okay, we will see everybody next week. Cheers. Here is your moment of Zener.